But the question is, I mean, there, as, as I mentioned, we and, and several other groups have shown in preclinical models that there's this association or this, this decline in NAD with age, but how about humans? And this is a study that uh, we haven't published yet, um, that we're currently, uh, uh, yeah, we hope to finalize soon. And this is George Janssens, who's in the audience here today, who, who spearheaded that together with the team of Patrick Schrauen in Maastricht. Um, and we, we took muscle biopsies from uh, young individuals um, um, and uh, as well from older individuals, older adults. And these older adults were subsetted according to their uh, activity profile. So we had older adults who were, we call them trained, um, they do uh, 14,000 steps a day, quite considerable. Um, the normal adults, they do around 10,000. I, I was surprised that they call it normal adults. I think it's quite active. Um, but let's call them normal adults for now. And the third group is impaired adults. So they have clearly a, a less active uh, lifestyle. Um, we have less of them in this group, only six, uh, and that's of course because if you're an older uh, impaired adult, you, you typically don't favor a muscle biopsy. Um, so it has been very difficult to recruit uh, these uh, individuals. So we take muscle biopsies from all these people and then we do targeted metabolomics. Uh, we end up with around 140 different polar metabolites that we, that we analyze. And this is uh, basically a description of the data. We see that many of the metabolites that we measure in the muscle biopsies, if you compare young versus old, so this is not subsetted for the activity categories, but just the younger versus the older, is that there is quite a lot of um, metabolites that are higher abundant in the, um, in the older one, older individuals, and uh, also a bunch of metabolites that are uh, reduced in the older individuals, and so higher in the younger. And the one that stood out for us, for obvious reasons, is NAD, which is um, uh, in this heat map representation is high in the young individuals and reduced in the, in the older, or I shouldn't say reduced, I should say lower in the older adults. The interesting thing is that if you subset this for the activity profile, so with this, here I call them athletic, it is, so this is the active elderly, the, the normal elderly and the, and the impaired older adults, you see that there is also this stepwise uh, uh, lowering of NAD. With the young individuals being high, then if you're an athletic, older in the, uh, adult, this sort of is the same level of NAD, but then with the normal uh, older adults and the impaired older adults, actually the NAD is much lower. So this is interesting. I mean, it's a confirmation basically that in a human cohort, we can also find these kind of changes that we for years already knew that were, were happening in, in animals. And we always assumed that this would be the same in humans. Now we have the confirmation. 